John here and welcome to Tuesday Blues, the weekly guitar lesson focused on helping you understand the fretboard and ultimately play better blues. And this lesson right now is all about one of the craziest tracks in the Robert Johnson catalog, The Red Hot. I first heard about this song on the Red Hot Chili Peppers album. I thought it was wacky, didn't pay much attention to it until I found out it was Robert Johnson who gave us this track. And it certainly is an oddball track when you compare it to what we normally think of as Robert Johnson's brand of Delta Blues. I mean, it sounds nothing like Sweet Home Chicago, Come On In My Kitchen, or Love In Vain. But to me, this track shows just how versatile he was as a player, especially since there's about a million chord changes in this one, and it's played at a pretty quick tempo. If you're new here, hit subscribe to help keep these lessons coming out each and every week, and let's dig in. We're going to cover this tune in two parts. First, we'll focus on the intro. It's just two bars, but there's definitely a little curveball thrown in there. We're going to tackle it head on, and then we'll have a look at the main progression, the main theme that repeats itself so much in this tune, and it's really the ragtime progression. We've covered that a lot on Tuesday Blues in different lessons, but I really think if you don't have it under your fingers yet, this is a good tune to work on to get it into your repertoire because there's not a lot of fancy finger picking going on here we're really just doing some strums as we pass through the chords and you really get to know the chord progression that kind of twists and turns and loops back on itself it's a great progression to know and we're going to get to that in just a minute but first let's dive in with the intro <laughs> all right so we start out way up here on a C major chord. This is a C major triad. Here's our E, that's the third of the chord. There's the G, the fifth, and then here's the root, C. And we're gonna strike this four times. I'm gonna do down strokes here with the pick, like that. And notice how on the second and the fourth time that I strike it, I kind of choke it out. And I'm doing that by lifting up slightly off of the strings and you can return your picking hand to the strings and just kind of mute it out as well. And we're gonna kind of do that on every other beat. You'll see that's kind of a rhythmic pattern that, uh, that we're gonna to adhere to throughout a lot of this, especially when we get to the main verse um, chords. And then what we're gonna do is switch over and play a D7, just the top three strings, and we're gonna do two strikes of that, two strums. Same down and same with the long and choked out. They're the same musical time, but we're just kind of making that second one a little more punchy. That's what we're looking for here. That's the vibe we're going for. And then we come down to a G7 here and do the same thing. And this is a G7 coming right out of this D7 shape. Just slid up to the seventh fret. There's the root if you're keeping track. And you should be <laughs> right there. So the first measure is this. Really cool. I love that. It's a great way to start this out. We really don't return to those chords anywhere else in the tune. So it makes the intro just kind of something special to get us started. And then speaking of something special, we're going to get into the second measure, which is a little, um, a little awkward when it comes to timing. At least for me learning this, it was awkward at first. And that's because there are actually five beats in this measure. So there's an extra beat. And also when you get into it, you would you kind of feel this C major coming, you know, after this. But what we do is actually a little bit different. We delay that C and we kind of syncopate. Well, we definitely syncopate the rhythm of a C and we're switching down into the open position. Well, let's get into it. All right, so what I did there, the top of the second measure, I'm striking the open third and second strings together. And then we've got a little bit of a mu, and then upstrokes on the C major chord with a little rest, a little mute in between. Kind of let them poke through, right? All right, and a, a couple of words about the picking here as we move along. I'm pointing out um, for the most part when we do upstrokes and when we do downstrokes, but if you need to alter that and play it with you know a feeling that, that you like and you wanna go downstrokes on that, it's totally fine. 
Uh, I'm giving you my tips as I kind of parse through this and tried to match things up to what I was hearing. And I'm also using a flat pick, but you could totally use just a bare thumb on this. Sounds really good to do it that way, or even a thumb pick. But there's a lot, to me, there's a lot of just straight down strumming throughout this entire tune. So there's a heavy presence of that. So back to our C major chord. We've got two upstrokes. That's how I'm choosing to play them. And then we're gonna do an upstroke on an F. So I'm just moving from C to this F major shape here. And I've got the first two strings barred, but it might pay. I don't do this, but I can see where it would definitely pay off if you go ahead and bar the top three strings. Still, you're gonna fret in front of that bar on the third string, the second fret with the chord. And you've got this. Sounds the same, but having that bar on the top three strings is gonna pay off in just a second if you choose to do it that way. So we got our F. And now after the F, and we're gonna mute there as well, pick up that A, that middle finger. And now we've got an F minor. That chord is coming up next. So see how it pays to already have that bar? Because we want that on the first fret of the third strings. So after this move from F to an F minor, we're gonna get into a G7. I'm gonna go ahead and fret this as if I were strumming all six strings. Good habit, my go-to move, it's familiar for me, but you really don't need it. We really just need the top four strings, really, with the F on the first string, first fret. And we're gonna do, kind of back to this, you know, rhythm where we play once, choke, and we're gonna do it again. So that's the same rhythm, we're just carrying it all the way down here to G7. All right, and it might be hard as I'm kind of walking you through each individual strung here, strum here to recognize that, yeah, this was 5-4, this was because we start with this, then we got another C, then we got our F, then we got two of these. When you play it in context, it sounds like it fits, even though it's an oddball measure. So I would really encourage you, and this is what I did, listen to Robert Johnson's intro. You can hear the guitar quite clearly, even though it's an old recording, because it's the intro. There's no vocal there to kind of obscure some of the notes. You can really hear what he's doing and really focus on the rhythm, especially with that second measure. And hopefully it'll sound something like this once you practice the chord changes. Now we get to tackle the main theme, that really fun ragtime chord progression. Remember this strumming rhythm that we did. We're gonna keep that intact as we move through that sort of long and then punch, all right? And we're gonna start with a C major chord, only right here. Probably familiar with a C major here, but we've also got kind of the top part of an A shape C chord. And if we finger it so that our index finger is barring at the fifth fret across strings four, three, and two, well, that's a C major triad right there, but we can add the C on top. All right, so we're going to play that, hit that twice, and then down to B. So we're just moving that triad on strings four, three, and two down into B. So that's just back one fret and then down again into A. And then now we need to bring in the top string again. So we're gonna strum across the top four strings and play the G to get us into A7 before changing chords. So you're gonna pick up, before we've been kind of backing this bar down, now we're gonna pick up and do a D7 with two strums like that. And then a G7. Again, top four strings. You don't need all this business, but it pays to have good form and to be able to go into this uh, at a moment's notice. So I'm carrying these fingers along for the ride. So two times on the G, and then C gets four times, but on the third time, there's something slightly special. So what we have for the first couple of measures is C, B, A, A7, D7, G7, C. And playing that in time, we've got. All right, let me slow that down for you. All 
All right, the cool thing is, once you've got that, you've got a lot of the meat of this ragtime progression that we're using here because the next couple of measures really track with that. We're just gonna change a couple of things to make this next repeat a little bit unique. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drag that high note, that melody note in the chord down with us. So we're gonna keep strumming through four strings, starting with A, or C rather, then B, then A, then A7, just like before. And now that we're at D7, we're gonna strike it four times. We're gonna kind of delay that, that coming home, that resolution into C major by playing two Ds and then two G7s. Well, I said Ds, D7, of course. So. All right, so now let's hear these couple of bars played up to tempo. All right, let's jam these four bars together because I think you'll see how this really has this cool sort of build to the C chord. And that's definitely where we're coming. That is the payoff that's happening next, but we gotta make sure we got these bars down first. Let's get to it. slower this next part is really cool because we change the pace and we do hit our C chord so we've got a nice little resolve there coming into this guitar break but it hangs and to me this kind of adds a little bit of suspense and of course the vocal line gets to do some pretty cool things. This is my favorite part where he sings, I got a girl, she's long and tall. She sleeps in the kitchen and feet in the hall. Super cool. And that's that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the C chord, let it hang. And then on the end of four, we're going to punch a C7 and then transition top of the next bar to an F. Let that hang for a beat and a half. So on the end of two, we're gonna punch that again and change down to this F minor seven chord, which is just barring across the first fret, strings four, three, two, and one. And then to get us out of this break, we're gonna punch that again, all right? So on the end of four of that measure, we punch that. And then we start this little move. More on that later. But first, real quick, if you're getting something out of this lesson, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out, helps get these lessons out to more people that really want to play really cool acoustic blues. And I'm all about sharing that. So if you would do me a favor and give me a thumbs up, that'd be awesome. And now back to the lesson. From here, we kind of go back to familiar ground, but we're gonna play the chords a little bit differently. We're starting on C, but not jumping back up to here. You can if you want to, but what we're gonna do is play it here. Punch it twice, like before, and then here we're going down to B on the fifth string, second fret, and I'm muting out the fourth string and strumming through the rest of the string. So from five, mute, three, two, one. And gives it a little more of an E vibe there. But we're gonna strike that twice. Then into the long A, top four strings, A7, D7, G7, and then C. All right, but then here is a little, a quick little bar, kind of a turnaround, really, where we go back to D7, back to G7, back to C. So coming out of that guitar break, we've got... All right, and the cool thing is from here, you can start to repeat the main theme, right? Back where we started this. Back to that break. 
breaks. You can see how this just cycles around on itself. And this ragtime progression is just, it does it brilliantly and it sounds so good. And as I said before, I think this is a great one to get that progression and get that sound in your ear because we're really just doing two down strums on the chords, you know, maybe four depending. <laughs> Make sure and pay attention to your rhythm and that you get that sort of long, that sort of that open close, open close, right? Um, we want to make sure that that, that groove, that sort of bounce uh, happens in your playing. What a tune. Take your time with this because the chord changes and there are a lot of them. They can feel super random at first. They certainly did for me, but pay attention to how the changes build their own little melody inside. It's really kind of cool how they weave together. Let that lead you and definitely practice slowly. This thing sounds pretty cool at a slower tempo and it just might help you learn this better and faster. If you enjoyed this, come on back next week for another acoustic blues lesson. And if you want to keep learning, click or tap right over there and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, practice smart and play on.